Good evening, everyone. I want to first say thank you for the elders for allowing me to be able to come to you this evening to share with you God's Word. I better put my watch up here because uh, that clock up there is not right. Would you turn to John 20, John 20? In reality, we could probably read this whole chapter of John 20 and get so much out of it. But we're going to focus on two verses of this, of this uh, chapter. We're going to focus on 16 and 17. Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found the stone taken away. Rather than believing Jesus had risen from the dead, the woman believed that the body has been moved. Mary remains in the, at the tomb crying. She sees Jesus, but does not know it was him. But when Jesus says her name, she recognizes it is the Lord Jesus. And then we know that our Lord Jesus ascends to his Father, our Father, Lord God. The message John is showing by the Holy Spirit through the gospel is that faith comes from understanding the scriptures, not by sight. The Apostle Paul taught the same message in Romans 10, 17. And it says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Seeing the empty tomb was not how the disciples came to faith. Understanding the scriptures is what is needed for any person to become a disciple. I thought about what I was going to come in and give this evening. So I wrestled with this all week. But I finally realized that I needed to come up with something that man has been doing. Today, millions of people are celebrating what is commonly called Easter. This day is recognition, recognition of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christians are not told to celebrate Easter. It's a special holiday once a year. But we are told to think about his resurrection every Sunday. The day he rose from the dead, as we remember the Lord's Supper, as he gave his life a cruel death on the cross for our sins. So we also remember his resurrection as he conquered death and has ascended to our Father God. For those that have their thoughts focused on Christ's resurrection, it is appropriate. I was talking to my brother earlier after our, our, his sermon this morning, and I asked him about Easter, and we both concluded he has completely gone to the right side. It's not the understanding or, or remembering the resurrection of our Lord, but now it's more money 
Easter, Easter bunny, eggs, is completely commercialized. But no thought about why. What, what is it that they were beginning to think about when they started with Easter? The Easter was supposed to be about the remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ's resurrection. So it is appropriate for us to be able to explain to our friends and family. Our family are still celebrating it right now. They do not even think about going to worship. They just think about having a good old time. And this is going to be going all the way to the end of the day, all evening. So we need to, to make for certain that the resurrection means to us as a true Christian. What does it mean to us as a true Christian? The resurrection proves Jesus is the Son of God. Convincing proofs. Turn to Acts 1. Acts 1, 1 through 3 says, The former treaties have I made, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after the, his passion for many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Declared to be the Son of God by the resurrection. Please turn to Romans 1. Romans 1, 1 through 4 says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. The resurrection confirms the truth of the Scripture. Scripture foretold his death and re resurrection hundreds of years before it happened. Turn to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, 10 through 12. It says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, he hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. He shall see of the travel of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteousness servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, Will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong? Because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was murdered with the transgressors, and he bare the sins of many, and made intercessions for the transgressors. Psalm 16, 10 through 11. Psalm 16, 10 to 11 says, For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. 
Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. It shows the gospel is true. The resurrection holds the gospel together. 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15, 1 through, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep the in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I, I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The resurrection makes forgiveness possible. The apostle Paul claimed this. Go to 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15, 16, 17. It says, For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Paul states, And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Without the resurrection of Jesus, Christianity comes undone, and that is true. There is no hope for the life to come for us to be saved from our sins. If Christ remained in the grave, the gospel itself depends on the resurrection. What can be more powerful than that? What knowledge on earth can compare to knowing that God himself died for, for the sins of his people and rose from the dead to display his power for all to see? No truth is greater than this. The power of Christ's resurrection, Romans 8:11. And it says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. The Holy Spirit of God dwells within each and every, one, every true Christian and believer. Granting us spiritual life in Christ here and eternal life with Christ in the age to come. Each Christian knows the power of Christ's resurrection because it is the very power which saved us from being dead in sin. To believe the gospel is to experience the power of the resurrection. Christ's offering on the cross was acceptable to God it satisfied divine justice. Romans 4.12. says, And the father of circumcision to them who are not of circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised.
Now turn to 4.25. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. The resurrection allowed us to be to put right with God. Romans 8, 33, 34. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is that that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yet rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. As I go any further, as you can tell, that, that my sermon this evening is about what the resurrection should mean to us. The resurrection means sin, death, and Satan have been conquered. Jesus defeated sin and death. Romans 6, 9, 9 through 10. Romans 6. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Death is no longer our enemy. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Satan, John 12, 31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. The resurrection means we are alive in Christ. Made alive. Ephesians 2, 5 through 6. Even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved, and hath raised up, has raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Revelation 1, 17, 18. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet and as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Resurrections, we are reunited re with him. Romans 6, 3 through 5 says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried by, with by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we, all, we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. The resurrection means we have hope. 1 Peter 1 through 4. According as, according as his divine power has given uh, unto us all things that 
pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The resurrection means a resurrection is guaranteed. Christ's triumph over the grave is, in, is heaven's guarantee that we also will be raised. 1 Corinthians 15, 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Go down to 23. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Corinthians 4:14 4, says, Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. The Christian believer must always be conscious of the fact of the purposes of the things that Jesus did for us. The purpose of the incarn incarnation was to reveal God to man and to redeem man to God. The purpose of the crucifixion was to shed his blood for your sins so you can be redeemed from the blood called redemption. The purpose of the resurrection is carrying the blood to the heavenly mercy seat, satisfying the claims of heavenly justice, averting, averting wrath, propitiation, and resurrection. The resurrection means Christ has all authority. Our brother has been having lessons on Jesus Christ's authority. Please turn to Matthew 28. Everyone should know this, this verse already. Matthew 28. Matthew 28, 18 through 19. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy, of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them, go, go to 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So we see that Jesus has been given all authority in heaven for he is ascended back to and all authority on this earth. If Christ has all authority with respect to salvation and to the church which he established, his spiritual body, that means there is no individual or body of men who hath the right to change anything that has been revealed. In a discussion Christ had, he made a statement that is very clear. In Matthew 5, 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one title shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Turn to John 14. John 14, 1 through, just a minute. Yes, just, just John 14, 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my house, in my Father's house, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Jesus Christ's resurrection means so much to the true Christian, for he has gone to heaven to prepare a place for us. John 16, I mean Acts 6, 26. Please turn to Acts 26. Acts 26, 22 through 23 says, Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue until this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Paul concludes with the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is that it gives hope to both the Jew and to the non-Jew. The hope we share is that we are now one, not two groups of people. The hope we share that there is one fold, not two. The hope that we now share that the kingdom of God on earth is open to all people, not just the Jews. The resurrection of Jesus ushered in the visible kingdom, Jesus called the church. You and I are a part of God's kingdom because the resurrection of Jesus opened a path pathway for us that his death alone could not do. Luke twenty two eighteen says, For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. What does the resurrection mean? The resurrection, the resurrection means to you and to me. <clears throat> resurrection in Greek and Anastasis which is a combination of two words. Anna, meaning up, and stasis, meaning stand. Now, I don't think I'm saying those words right, but therefore, literally, the resurrection means that he stood up. He defiled death, hell, and the grave. They whipped, beat, pierced, crucified, and buried and rolled a stone upon him with the seal of the Roman government to never come out. But on the third day, he stood up. The devil did not expect it, but he stood up. The demons of hell did not expect, but he stood up. Hell did not expect it. He stood up. Pilate and Rome did not expect it, but he stood up. The Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes did not expect it, but he stood up. Jesus died on the cross for our sins and died a cruel death, but he stood up. He conquered death. He stood up for my justification. He stood up for my recon reconciliation. He stood up for my redemption. He stood up for my future resurrection and glorification. What Jesus accomplished in his, in his death was his death defeated who? Satan. 1 John 3, 8 says, He that committeth sin is, is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So in conclusion, so what does Jesus Christ's resurrection mean to a true Christian? It means everything in our daily walk, our daily lives, and how we live. 
People around the world come together on this day to remember Jesus Christ's resurrection. But it should not be on this holiday called Easter. But for the true Christian, we remember his resurrection every day. And every first of the week, Sunday, we remember his resurrection. The joy we celebrate that you and I can be a part of God's eternal kingdom because Jesus rose up from the grave to be able to explain to our friends, neighbors, and to family what the resurrection truly means to a true Christian. To be always, to be always ready when our time comes to live, to leave this earth and be with our Father, Lord God. The resurrection. Not about money, not about eggs, not about bunny, not about getting together with, with friends and, and and having a heyday. It should be about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. A day of judgment is coming. Acts 17, 30, 32 says, And the times of ignorance God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day in which the in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath adorned, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again on, of this matter. We need to get hold of a basic fact. God sees the whole picture. Man does not. It really isn't necessary for me to know the end from the beginning because God already knows. God does not have to give us reasons because he gives us promises. We say, oh, if I only knew what tomorrow holds, I'd be happier. Yet if, if we knew what tomorrow holds, we might be terribly frightened. The important thing is not to worry about tomorrow, but to live for Christ today. We don't have to know what tomorrow holds. Just who holds it? Just who holds tomorrow? Life has never been easy. This world is a battleground. Jesus said, in this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The difficulties of life are God's tools for build, building character and making us more like Jesus Christ. I'm sure that all of us have times of depressions when we feel like throwing in the towel and quitting. But those are the times we need to turn to Christ and let his power go to work. Jesus will judge the world, world in righteousness. God's holiness demands all sin be punished. So Jesus paid the ransom price for, all, for us all on the cross. Forgiveness of sins comes when the penitent believer dies to sin, is buried in water, and raised a new creature to come and be baptized and be immersed in water. The word baptized comes from the Greek baptize, which, which Strong's Greek dictionary translates as to immerse, immerse, submerge, to make well met, fully wet. All that Jesus achieved at the cross, death, burial, and resurrection, was not for his sake, but for our sake. So take advantage of that. A song has been selected. The water of baptism is ready for you to come. Or if you are in need of prayers, will you come as we stand and sing the song invitation? Softly and tender.